Chaz, how are you doing? Good morning. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. We yeah, got thanks Chaz. for coming in. Jody, or, <laughs> why do I call you Jody? That's awesome. <laughs> I don't even know a Jody. <laughs> we got Jordan. 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 Uh, and you are with Brody HVAC. I am. That's awesome, man. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Um, tell me a little, a little bit about your background and then how you found Brody. Why Brody? Uh, instead of Chaz, Chaz yes. HVAC. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, again, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this a little over four years. Um, I worked for a, uh, a mid-level uh, commercial contractor mm-hmm. uh, for, for about four years and decided, hey, I want to kind of go out and do this on my own. Um, two passions in my life, one being a dad, mm-hmm. the other one being a business owner. So I can remember being my son's age, seven years old, and just dreaming about you know, what would it look like to be a dad? What would it look like mm. to be a business owner? And I remember, you know, seven, eight, nine years old going out with my wagon and going and washing people's cars in the neighborhood because I wanted to do something for myself. And I, I had that entrepreneurial you know, right. mindset as far and as And to goes. get that money when so, you were a kid, that that was such accomplishment. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, oh, I, yeah. I did something. Absolutely. You know, mm. I've been working since I've been about 11, you know, worked in my uh, family businesses over the years and that kind of thing. So work ethic has never been an issue. I've, I've always had two and three and four jobs just because I want to fill my time doing something that's purposeful. Awesome. So, you know, you take that fast forward into what we're doing now, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Brody HVAC, I named the business after my son. Awesome. And that's, a, that's a very intentional thing. Of course. A couple of reasons why. Number one, I really wanted to integrate my family into not only the marketing of it, but understanding that, hey, you know what? We are a family that's out serving other families and mm. we're out doing it fairly, you know, because not everyone has countless money. Not everyone has the means to be able to get the best of the best of the best. We help that's those right. too. But there's there's struggling families out there and there's families out there that are just trying to make ends meet. They're mm-hmm. just trying to do the best that they can for their family right here, right now. Sometimes that means fixing something and just trying to get it by until the next time that you can do it. Mm-hmm. In other cases, it means, hey, you know what? I know I need to have a replacement done, but I, I can't afford a thirteen, fifteen, seventeen thousand dollar system. Mm-hmm. What other options do you have? Don't sell me. Give me options. Educate mm-hmm. me on on what what do I need? What's the best option for me? Uh, given whatever my scenario is. So right. so you know again, our family serving other families right right there where their need is as far as that goes. Number two reason why I named it after my son, um, just because I want it to be a demonstration to him mm-hmm. of what hard work looks like. Not so that I can just give him a company because right. if he wants it when it comes time to do that, because he's seven now, but when he wants it, he's going to have to earn it. He's going to have to work his way through and demonstrate that he has the ability to to do the work and to, and to grow it the same way that I would and to take care of the customers the way that they're going to be expected to be taken care of because of what I've already mm-hmm. built to, to this point. The other thing too is that I could have named it after myself, but then if I was to just go drag my name through the mud, it's just my name. Right. And if someone doesn't like that, I'm, I've got big enough shoulders. I can take their opinion right. that, that they don't like me, and I'm okay with that. But here, Separate if it's your son, Sure. Right? <laughs> here's a poor seven-year-old that just goes to se- second grade every single day and has no no idea of what's happening about his name specifically. Right. So there's a there's a level of accountability that's there, and it was intentional that I did that because mm. I didn't want to go out just without a care in the world about how it goes. Sure. I wanted to go out and I wanted to build something that was going to to honor his name and mm-hmm. not necessarily drag it through the mud. So. You know that uh, it's 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 awesome that you say that because you know that there's it's visualization of success, right? Mm-hmm. That a lot a lot of like athletes, you know, they go to psychologists and they visualize you running across the finish line and visualize putting the medal around your neck and it, it, and they have to keep something in front of their face to can you continue the passion and continue uh, the push and the grind. Right. Well, I mean, you're seeing it on your shirt every day. Yes. Your son is the reason you're doing this, Absolutely. which makes a lot of sense. Well, the other thing too, is that, you know, when you come home at the end of the day and you're, you're having a discussion with your son, Hey, how was your day? Mm. You know, and how he's trained not necessarily That's trained, it. but but he's now inquisitive to come back to me and say, well, yeah. dad, how was your day? Well, mm-hmm. let me explain to you the wins that we had. Let me explain mm-hmm. to you the challenges that we had, mm-hmm. things that went bad. Why? Because if you don't demonstrate to them that not every scenario is a win and you still persevere through that, mm-hmm. even at seven years old, he can understand, hey, you know what? There, it's a, There's a level of strength 
that's involved in life (laughs) that you have to build and you have to culminate through the process. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to demonstrate that to him in such a way that that when he gets to that point, he he doesn't realize there there's no uh, realization that things don't come just by themselves. Hundred percent. You know, so mm-hmm. the value of the effort is is the big key. Well, that's why I love sports and kids being sports. And it's kind of sad that sports is kind of people aren't playing as many sports as kids. Right. And it's technology. There's a yeah. lot of reasons oh, behind yeah. this, but uh, you know, um, it's okay to get your ass kicked in sports every now and then. In fact, it's essential to get your butt kicked uh, yeah. in, in, in sports because that's teaching you you don't win all the time. And you're right. I have a seven-year-old as well. Mm-hmm. I have two girls, but I have a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old. And and uh, teaching them that failure is not a bad thing because it's really not. It's just a lesson. That's all it is. Uh, so I, I'm okay coming home with three wins and about three or four failures because – minuscule failures are just hey and failures are relative right for you it's might be like well, three people told me no today and i'm like that's not a failure but it's a failure to this person but it's not to this person bobby boucher calls those tackling fuel that's right that's it that's it that's it, that's <laughs> but, it. Um, I love you know, it. <laughs> participation trophies don't exist in our world yeah that's not what makes you money that's not what makes a company successful you know, and if if that's the direction that you're going, and that's the the culture in which that mm-hmm. you were raised, where where come where where does your passion come from? And that's it. So. And I can I can tell already your passion is your family. You put it on your chest. You you, you incorporated it in uh in, in the state of Georgia, yeah. so which is awesome. Uh, so that that's a hundred percent where your passion is. I can tell it. It's seeping out of you. That's Absolutely. awesome. That's awesome. What's uh? So what are you? Where are you at in your business right now after 10 months? I mean, are you, how are you getting your business? Are you doing a lot of networking? Uh, are you doing uh, any mailers? What, t- tell us a little bit about no, that. I'm doing a couple of different things, but he- here's the big key is that, you know, business networking for me is a passion and it's been something that's been successful for me my whole life. Mm-hmm. It's something that was demonstrated to me by my dad. I remember being my son's age and being in a restaurant. You talked about, hey, everybody knows my husband. Yeah. Like we were talking earlier. And I remember going into a restaurant, just minding our own business. And all mm. of a sudden, some random person would walk up and, hey, Roger, who's that? <laughs> that's right. So every time that he would have that conversation, I would always go back and say, oh, hey, dad, who was that? And he was, oh, this is so-and-so. This is how he helps me do what I do. So it's, it goes in, in the in the chamber there and That's you start right. and you start, okay, hmm, okay. Everywhere we went, there was someone that would always walk up to my dad and say, hey, Roger, how you doing? And what then, does your dad do? Uh, he did uh, custom laminates and furniture uh, for many years. So yeah. um, actually our, our family had the largest manufacturing plant in Tampa for many years. And then they sold that business off. They did wicker and rattan furniture all the way up until about 1980. It sounds like uh, your dad was a, was, was your mentor. Oh, very much so. Yep. Very and, much so. And uh, so what did he teach you that ta- that now you're teaching your son and now you're doing a business? So my dad was a, a single dad. My mom passed away when I was very young. So um, family's always been important to me because of that void that was there. Um, got a great stepmom that came in when I was about 13. God bless her, you know, to come into a scenario oh, when, no. when there was teenagers involved yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. And she's been great with us and, and she's a great grandmother to my, my, my kids as well. Um, but in those really young years, seeing my dad struggle through and trying to figure out where his place was, but always having that network to fall back on, there was always a level of success that my dad was able to demonstrate. Mm. And even if it was just something where, hey, we had a need at the house, hey, you know, the, the roof's bad, it needs to be done, the air conditioner needs to be looked at, whatever the case may be, he had his little black book. Mm. And he would go in that book and he always had the person to call, no matter who it was, no matter what it was. Mm -hmm. And he always referred those to our family, to his friends, whatever the case may be. Everyone called him. Old school networking. He was that resource, which I try to be to my customers. Mm -hmm. But he was that resource. If you have a need, I have a trusted advisor Mm -hmm. that I can provide for you that's going to make sure that that needs get handled appropriately and you're not going to get taken advantage you you can welcome this person into your home it's safely and, and so on and so forth that's right so well that's great uh i, I love to hear the mentor stories because i i have you know four or five mentors that really uh, you know pieced me together over the years and a lot of them don't know each other but i i i can tell you what they did for me in my life at that time uh and and on and on and on and it's just I, i've just been pieced together like you know uh frankenstein's 
You know, exactly. I'm not going to say monster. I'm going to say Frankenstein's uh, golden child, if you will. Exactly. And, uh, so I try to be positive, right? Not not negative. Yeah. So back to how we're building it. You know, yeah. uh, I, we we're part of a large church here in the area, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of relationships that you get through that. Um, having been a, a former pastor, a former uh, ministry leader, as far as that goes, I worked for a ministry for a long period of time. So those church relationships are very important mm -hmm. to me. A lot of our customer base is coming through those relationships. Awesome. Also, the company that I used to work for, they at one time had a residential division and I did a lot of work with those clients. Mm -hmm. Well, they were sold to another company and, and at some point may or may not have been handled the way that they wanted to be. I continued to be their resource. I was still the person that they were calling, hey, I have this question about my air conditioner because you're my guy. Yeah. You're the one I have a relationship. I don't know these new people. And I trust you. Correct. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those have now just transitioned to they just come home because now they, they already have that relationship with me. Now I can do for them personally what I was doing for them through a company now at that point. So so I have a, a very large base of, of customers that have just naturally gravitated to me through that yeah. process. Um, you know, I'm doing some uh, some print ads and those types of things. Right now, I'm just really focusing on um, brand awareness and those types of mm -hmm. things, making sure that people recognize that that we are a player in the industry, that we do have uh, we have great service. Uh, we, we are capable of doing a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, you know, great technicians that have the ability to, to really work through, you know, hard case scenarios and, and do the more challenging things of, of our stuff. I'm not the company that's wanting to focus on the easy stuff. The easy stuff, there's a, a lot of people out there that can do that for mm -hmm. you. I'm the one that is is a little bit more educated about what it is that we do and a, a more passionate about making sure it gets done correctly. And you're, you're early enough in, in the business where you're probably hands-on you know, going out there and, and doing it with your technicians. Oh, very much so, <laughs> yes. You know, it, it's a balance. You know, yeah. I really have to kind of, I have to restrain myself to a certain degree. Cause, of course you do. You know, the, the passion in me wants to go out there and turn wrenches with everybody. But, but they're they, not going to learn that way. Well, A, they're not going to learn that way. And B, my company's not going to grow that way if I'm not really placing the importance mm -hmm. where it needs to be placed. So I make sure that everybody has the the support that they need, but but let, let them do their part. So. That sounds great. So let let uh let our our listeners know how can we get a hold of you? What is a great client for you right now? Uh, email addresses, everything that you need to, to get out there to get some business. Yeah, so easily uh, telephone 404-458-1975. Um, our website, BrodyHVAC.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn at Brody HVAC. So uh, you're able to catch us there. I think we're on LinkedIn as well. That was a recent, uh, or not not LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. Yeah. That was a recent addition that we put out just recently. Also on YouTube at Brody HVAC as well. Um, so we, we put out all of our videos uh, through social media and through uh, YouTube so that you're able to go back and, and just see the different things that we've done along the way. You know, I try to include my kids in the videos that we do. We use uh, really short videos so it's not something that you have to spend a, a half a day sitting there watching something. I do that, see those on LinkedIn a yeah. lot. So, you know, I don't want someone to have to spend a half a day to sit there and figure out what message that mm -hmm. I'm trying to uh, trying to put out there. And But, you know, I try to include my kids because they can their attention span can last about, you know, 30 to 90 seconds. <laughs> I hear so. you. Um, a lot of adults are like that too. <laughs> exactly. I know I'm like that. If it's too long, I'm like, eh, I can't, can't deal with it. Um, uh, outside of that, uh, you know, uh, just there's lots and lots of ways to get in touch with us as far as that goes. What's so, a great client for you? A great client for me is obviously a residential client that's just looking to have the right service done in their home. Mm. Um, a lot of people say, hey, you know, we do maintenance on your house. Well, what does that mean? contextually look like mm -hmm. you know is it someone that's coming in and changing your filter well, great okay and then and then what mm -hmm. so like right now you know everything that that i do is based off of two words that i like to to put it's on our t-shirts it's on our business cards it's on our website uh, integrity and quality mm -hmm. You know, quality and integrity sounds easier, but integrity is more important to me. Yes, right. So even though it doesn't necessarily flow as well, mm -hmm. it needs to be the the primary word and it's and it's on purpose. So let me give you a demonstration of that. Sure. So like right now, our temperatures have been up and they've been down and mm -hmm. they've been up and they've oh, been yeah. down. Okay. If I'm actually doing a proper spring maintenance mm -hmm. on your system, I have to actually check the refrigerant pressures. Refrigerant pressures naturally have um, characteristics to them. And I can't viably check your pressures unless I have temperatures that are above 65 degrees and your system itself outside isn't wet from the rain. 
because actually the, the, okay. the wetness on the coil can actually affect how the pressures are, are monitored when we're actually going out and checking those. There's companies right now that are trying to come out even when the temperatures are 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 cooler mm. and still trying to, degrees, yeah. and still trying to do those spring maintenance. And I, you can't do it properly. Th- th- you can't go out and do everything that you were supposed to do based off of the manufacturer's recommended specifications mm. if you don't have certain conditions. So I literally have a list sitting in my house of customers that I haven't been able to visit yet because I haven't had temperatures to be able to do that. That's right. I'd love the money. I'd love the opportunity. <laughs> but right now is not the right time. And if I'm if I'm building a business on integrity, mm-hmm. I'm going to wait. And I've had two or three of them call me several times. Hey, did you forget me? No, I haven't no, forgotten no. you at all. I'm waiting to it's make sure that I can it's actually do cold, it correctly yeah. because I don't want to take your money. And at the end of the day, I haven't provided you with the service that I said I was going to do. So. I'll tell you this, uh, um, that if you're out there and you need service, these are the kind of companies, not not saying that there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, the bigger 20, 30 truck companies. There's nothing wrong. That's where we always want. That's where we always want to end up. Uh, that's why we're doing this is to, to build a business. You don't want to stay at one truck or two trucks, but it's time it's time when you're doing this it's good to get in a company like yours because you're going to remember that customer in 15 years that you worked on their you wrenched their 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 thing you fixed it by your own hands and you'll remember that yeah and uh then you got somebody for life i tell you uh one of my my mentors uh we were we were um at a network group and john loud was there and he mm-hmm. goes john loud put in my uh uh, my security system. And I was like, Oh, this, the company did goes, no, John loud put in my security yeah. system. That's how long ago <laughs> yeah, it was. Exactly. Like he did it himself. And, uh, I can guarantee you they didn't meet that day, mm-hmm. but I guarantee you that John would know him. He would remember his oh, house and remember doing it himself. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, it's great. To, it was great for you to be here. I love your passion. I love that you named it after your son. That's oh, incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a badge of honor and it reminds you every day what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing every minute. Absolutely. I love saying his name over and over again. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, thanks for coming in. Uh, everybody be kind to each other out there. Absolutely. Yeah.